Mercury General Corporation. Now, I looked up most undervalued financial services companies and this name came up near the top. And so it has caught our eye. Let's take the usual steps. We're gonna have our opening move. Depending on that, we'll get into gathering facts. Then I will unravel the story behind the numbers. And finally, we'll call in the Sage Seeds AI. It will assign a ranking to this company based on valuation as of when I'm making this video. See if you can guess where this company is going to land as we go along. This is going to be the 47th company in the ranking. Let's dive in so that your wisdom can blossom. The opening move will be the item 8 auditor having quite many bullet points on their paragraphs but let's not look into it unless it becomes relevant to a second auditor having a second issue we'll look at it if it becomes relevant the balance sheet they are owed just over half a billion that would be billion in premiums right now manageable goodwill good thing to check overall total assets is about 1.2 ish total liabilities for financial services companies one is probably overkill but as long as you're not at one or lower anything that is closer to one is better and so this is quite a tight ship they're running here and that, that's quite nice on liabilities though they have a substantial a billion and a half of something called unearned premiums maybe we look into that moving on to the income statement on the expense side, they have very decent operating expenses. Now, this ratio uh, is quite low, which is good to see. Meanwhile, their loss ratio is sizable. I mean, this is a, a, a large, large chunk. They're paying about 80% of the premiums that they receive in whatever it is that they insure. I mean, this is the closest thing an insurance company has to a gross margin. And so looking at a 20% gross margin, you would certainly be like, that's uh, not very great. Interesting that it showed up in a, a undervalued list when, <laughs> when they lost money. Maybe it's currently affecting the price or something, although we'll avoid speculating. On to the statement of cash flows. Depreciation very contained, although I do wonder what they're spending, uh, <laughs> what, they're, what, what fixed assets they're buying. Probably offices or something. Clipboards in order to have their, <laughs> their uh, insurance agents go out and about. Every, everything's uh, pretty stable. Arguably, in an accelerated fashion, they have been increasing their loss expense reserves. It kind of just means that they're expecting their business to grow. I mean, let's find out what it is that they insure and why is this loss ratio so high? Business description from the notes to the item eight. Personal automobile, there we go. That is very much the sort of <laughs> the sort of thing that I feel more comfortable now. Of course they have a low margin business. Over 80% of all of that were written in California alone and so specifically a California car insurance company. This just adds even more color. I would imagine that the sort of people getting automobile insurance in California would be less profitable to insure. I mean, it's not like insuring cars in, in Iowa or Wyoming. Crazy Californians be having car accidents, apparently. Does anyone recognize these insurance companies? I mean, most of them have the name Mercury. It looks like pretty much all of them have the name Mercury in them. Um, they're saying that estimating loss reserves is a difficult process and because even amongst different automobile companies, they shouldn't be copying off of each other. It's not, a, it's not a test that you can just copy off of. They're saying long tail liability claims are l less predictable than short tail claims. They quarterly adjust based on incurred loss, paid loss, average severity, coupled with the claim count development methods, and a linear model. Interesting if that's, <laughs> they should maybe upgrade that. Now maybe Sage Seeds AI could take a day off to go help them out. So even though they're claiming lots and lots of conservatism here, some of this tech is kind of leaning on a little bit low tech, if I'm being completely honest. Just the mathematics here is not super cutting edge from what I'm seeing in these descriptions. Are you conservative or are you inefficient, guys? Because there are differences and that's kind of what we need to continue to dig into. 
Ah, so what was it that their depreciation was related to? It's related to capitalized implementation costs for cloud computing arrangements. And so they haven't admitted it directly, but this is a company trying, albeit seemingly quite slowly, just a few million every year when they're a billion and billion dollar business, um, very, very slowly getting with the time, so to speak. Now, I don't have a right to talk about details here. I've still not seen the details. They're becoming tech savvy quite slowly, and they know that it's something that they need to do, but they're not seeing particularly in a rush to do so. I will give credit to one thing is that now we are in the item one, they have a section called the reconciliation of net loss and loss adjustment expense reserves. Um, the line I want to look at here to give them some credit is this line right here, incurred losses and loss adjustment expenses related to prior years. And so these numbers here, the takeaway is these are kind of small. They're actually roughly one to two percent of the current years. Hey, if you're getting more comfortable uncovering the stories behind the numbers, please like and subscribe. There's two parts to the reserves that they have to keep. It's the losses themselves and then loss adjustments. This plus or minus one to two percent paints a healthy picture for the loss adjustments. Okay, now we're getting into some juicy things. Here they are tracking their different ratios, including the company-wide loss ratio. Good to see it in a nice tabular format. 85 is a high loss ratio. In previous years, it was in the 70s, even getting as low to 67% in 2020. Um, perhaps what's going on here is some sort of adjustment after the pandemic, after the year 2020. Um, I know that all sorts of industries had very, very difficult to predict, we'll say, uh, effects from the pandemic lockdowns. It could be residual waves of impact from the pandemic lockdown. This increased loss ratio actually directly led to their negative net income. It's not uncommon for insurance businesses to sometimes lose money, but a high 70 loss ratio is enough. You know, it's still not necessarily good in my opinion. Arguably, I don't know enough about automobile insurance companies specifically. Um, I would imagine that they're used to higher ratios in this specific type of insurance. Um, but this business itself is also expanding into other types of insurance. It's a fine line between making some money and, and not making any at all. Well, I have a feeling this is not the first time a random blog is going to let us down. It's not a bad business per se, but it, it just seems like an insurance company that is hanging in there, I guess. Like, you know, lots and lots of businesses have positive net income. Uh, less businesses have positive income some years, negative income other years. Even less businesses have this fluctuation without really having any sort of explanation as to why. And the report just kind of was like, you know, expect this when the numbers were kind of not good. An 85% loss ratio. Please like, subscribe. Let me know if you guys like the mathematics of these financial services businesses. The financial services though is very straightforward once you get comfortable with the math. Certainly I could consider making an overexplained video for specific types of financial calculations in the future. In the comments below, share your wisdom, share this video. MCY is ranked 41 out of 47 in value for the 2022 season. Yeah, it'll be very, very patient for a growing business, much less patient for a business that has just kind of burnt money in the last year. Another thing I can highlight is that the company is relatively cheap, and if someone wants to dig in and find out whether this loss ratio will start to uh, at least stabilize in the low 70s, you could pick this up and, and, and the ranking is a little pessimistic for well, I would argue for a reality. <laughs> Relatively undervalued company according to the AI. It's just that once you consider the overall financial picture and its history, unpredictable years of profit or not, THC's AI is not valuing this very highly. Now, I'd love to introduce you guys to some of these machine learning tools so you can put those linear models away sooner rather than later.